Hey guys, welcome back to Exotic Car Hacks. And we are now in my Huracan STO, my famous Tiffany Blue, known as Blue Glocko STO, sitting on anarchy wheels. And it's been, believe it or not, one full year that this car has been here. For those of you that think I just flipped cars, some of these cars are here to stay. They're not necessarily here to be flipped. And this particular one is one of those. So the question is, was it a good choice to keep the STO for one year? How do I feel about it one year later? So the one thing about the STO that I want you to know is I've owned this car for now, like exactly one year, about like th three weeks to a year now. I've put about a thousand miles on it. And there are some really good things about it. Like I want you to listen to this. This is fantastic. Amazing. Like this car is as fast, if not faster, than an SVJ in a straight line. And it's pretty incredible because it's light, it's rear wheel drive, and it takes off like crazy. And I think that is part of its biggest problem when it comes to driving it, is that it's almost too fast for the street, so you don't have as much fun on the torque side of things on the lower RPMs. You don't get the noise the Performante had, you don't get the excitement of like just driving through town without having to be in high rev. Actually, it feels pretty sluggish uh, in low RPMs, even with the valves open. These are valves fully open. We just left them open, but you just don't get that vibration from an excitement of driving around town uh, from, from like low RPM standpoint. So that's always been my biggest struggle with the STO and it continues to be. The one thing I will say is that the more I drive this car, like let's say I get into this car from my 765 LT or I get in this car after driving an SF90 for a, a few days, I will get in this car and absolutely hate it. I think it drives like complete crap compared to those cars because they're so exciting to drive, even just driving around town. And this just isn't. So what happens is that I really don't like it. And then I'll drive it for a few days. And I think this is one of those really important reasons why test driving a car doesn't hold as much weight as owning a car. So when I spend a couple of days with it, then I come to enjoy it again for what it is. And I don't enjoy it enough to say, hey, I want to get in it nonstop. Like I can't wait to drive it. I'd rather drive something else. So it's not like my most exciting car to drive, but I can appreciate it for what it is. And then I get phased with this really incredibly bizarre thing, which is this, this screen. I cannot tell you how much I hate this screen. Like I hate this beyond anything else. Like th that is my most hated screen. I think of any car. And for one single reason, the radio doesn't have a knob, like a knob to turn this up or down. In order to turn the radio on or off or to go up and down, you have to basically play with this fucking stupid thing. And in addition to that, in order to go there, look, if I'm here, I'm driving and I want to basically change the volume, I have to first click this and then do that. So it's like there are two to three clicks to get to audio, or you can click these two together and then do this. But again, multiple clicks to get something as simple as a knob or a button could shut off. Now, let's say I wanna go on Bluetooth. I hit media, which is great, but now in order, it doesn't default to Bluetooth. So I have to go here, hit Bluetooth, and now I have music. It, it just doesn't make sense how unfriendly this screen is. And while the touch is good, the touch is responsive, it's just really, really annoying. Even climate, let's say I wanna change the climate. I have to go here and I have to change by pressing this or this or whatever up and down. It's just really, really annoying that it's that tiny, that small, and just that hard to navigate and use. So I absolutely hate this screen. And I think a big reason why I can't get into this car as much is because this screen is just too distracting from a driver's standpoint experience. So for that reason, for a track-inspired car, it doesn't make sense. So it's a car that's not suited for the streets, it's suited for the track. But yet, its interface is suited as a the same they put in the Evo and everything else, which is terrible. The craftsmanship is excellent, the quality is excellent, hasn't had a single problem since I've had it, which is great, you know, hasn't been driven that much, but also no problems. Alcantara feels solid, seats are fantastic, a lot of headroom in general, even if you're taller. Rear visibility, absolutely zero, you can't see anything. I can basically see slats I'm pretty good at recognizing cars and I can't recognize anything of what I see behind me. Perhaps Lamborghini should use a digital camera like Maserati did in the MC20. In this particular car, the SVJ, it might be incredibly helpful and incredibly good uh, to help do that. Now, let's talk a little bit about aesthetics. Beauty of the car, beautiful. One of the best and most exciting 
Huracans ever made. Wide fenders, now that I have put wheels on it, it's exciting, it gets attention. It's a lot bigger in person than people think. It's not as small as a Huracan, it feels like an SVGA, large, lots of road presence, exciting, big wing. Everything in design is very well done. But here's my advice to Lamborghini. Let the Huracan die. I don't know why you guys keep making the STO, the Technica, the Serato, the STO 63. It's absolutely a dead platform. Like I understand the whole, we don't want to go full hybrid or lose the V10 and maybe do the V8 twin turbo. It is now outdated. Like it is an dated platform and it needs to die. Like the car needs to go away. It was out since 2015, right? Like I think that's when the first Huracans like basically hit the street. So they're gonna milk this all the way to like 2024, 2025. I'm telling you this car needs to go. Like this was the best final version. I don't think you needed a Technica. I don't think you need anything. You already had the Performante. Then you had the, the STO, which was even more radical. You had the Evo, the Evo rear wheel drive. These were great cars. They were great cars for the money and they were fantastic. This is a heavy loaded STO at 400 grand, like 410,000, which is on the heavy side. And it is fantastically good looking for what it is. And I can't recommend it enough uh, in general because I think it's a wonderful car uh, as, as a platform. I think it's great. The issues with the STO is one, it doesn't do enough to differentiate itself from the Evo from an inside cockpit, which I think this screen should just die, especially with a car like this. The second thing, which again, I think design really works. The noise is just awful for a car of this caliber. You expect more of an SVJ pop. You expect more, the Urus sounds better than this, which makes no sense. So like, why would the Urus sound better than the STO? It uh, makes no sense, right? Like factory Urus should not sound better. So, you know, it definitely, it definitely is one of these cars that, you know, could be so much better if they cared about the driving experience and not so much about just, oh, it's a track beast. But here's the argument. This car hasn't even pulled a record as good as the Performante because it doesn't have active aero. So the argument is it doesn't do what the Perf can do on a track, but it's the most track focused Huracan. So like, I don't understand. If the Performante was the one that won the track record and the STO couldn't do it, then why would you not just make the STO more like the Performante in a better version, even if it's not as fast, at least more maybe better looking and has better features and more exciting. I still think a Perf is a significantly better car with a 200K gap between the two cars. And, and that's why it's a significantly better car. Now, if it wasn't a 200K gap, I would say it's probably not, it's a little bit better, but still a 200 gap is significantly better. And so for that reason, I don't think the STO is really a car that I'm gonna keep in the long, long term. I think in the short term for now, it's still gonna stay here. Perhaps it'll get sold in the next like couple of months if I really don't drive it at all. For the most part, this is the car I am least excited to drive out of all my cars, uh, which is sad because it's really pretty. And the Huracan platform is really fantastic. So I thought to myself, well, if it's that fantastic and it's really pretty, it should technically work much better than it has. So anyways, those are my thoughts on specifically the, uh, the STO as a, as a car and, and my thoughts about it. Now, values have come down significantly. I mean, significantly on these cars. These cars used to bring 100 to 150 over. So we were talking about 550, 540, 530. And now we're talking about these cars are bringing somewhere between 30 to 50 over for regular cool specs. And they're about bringing a sticker or 10K over for shitty specs. So if you have all that cartoon character livery on your car and it looks like horse shit because you're colorblind, then you're probably not gonna get much for your car. If you have a really sick color, a good sticker, and you have carbon options, you're probably gonna do really well still, even in this market, make a couple of grand over what you paid after driving a year, and you're okay. This is also part of the reason why I'm a believer that uh, I should perhaps sell the car because I think it still brings a little premium right now, uh, even if it's 50, 70, 80K over. And I think that that because of its color or its spec, whatever, but I think that is so important because I think in the next year, we're not gonna see that anymore. And I think once that goes away, then the question becomes, if I don't drive it that much, did I miss out on making money just to keep it kind of in the collection without a real reason? So, you know, my thoughts are, uh, STO, as far as it's concerned, probably better cars on the road for the money. Uh, not really my favorite, the least favorite of my collection, but indeed a, an honest review about what I think about the car and really what you should be doing with it as well. So now you 
figured it out. Now we're gonna give it to this gentleman so he can clean it, uh, so it can look pretty, and then go back on the lift and basically disappear uh, into never being driven again. So there you have it. Now remember, like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and let me know what are your thoughts on the STO. Do you think it's an incredible car or incredible waste of money? Love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And of course, don't forget to take the training as always to learn how to buy, drive, and of course, enjoy exotic cars without losing money and to join the greatest exotic car community on the internet, Exotic Car Hacks. See you guys on the next video. We'll review yet another one of my cars.